I really like that they include this beanie. I think it's a nice touch and I actually like the way it looks. So the first thing that I wanted to mention when I had to assemble this Ride One Up Taurus is that it came with a lot of pieces that you have to assemble yourself. I had to put the front tire on, the front fork on, the brakes, the pedals, this chain thing, the seat, the handlebars. There were a lot of steps to actually assemble this e-bike. But the reason that I think that is is so that they could help bring the cost down of this e-bike because it only comes in at $12.95, which is really affordable for all the awesome features that this e-bike has. So let's dive into some of those features now. After getting a chance to take this e-bike for a spin, I can really say that I enjoyed the ride. I really like that it has hydraulic brakes because I can stop on a dime just like that. So the hydraulic brakes are a nice touch instead of mechanical brakes. That's been really nice. Also, another thing that I really liked about this e-bike is that it's a class three e-bike, which means on pedal assist, it can go up to 28 miles an hour, which is really quick for an e-bike, but you can still go 20 miles an hour with the thumb throttle right here, which is a nice feature as well. So you can choose to go 20 or 28 miles an hour, whichever you prefer, or all the in-between stages with the pedal assist, which is from zero to five. You can adjust the pedal assist levels. Another thing that's interesting about this thumb throttle is that you can actually use it when you're in any of the pedal assist levels from zero to five. So right now I'm in pedal assist level zero and you can see that I can still give it some throttle. So that's kind of nice that you can use the thumb throttle in any situation. I really appreciate that when I'm riding in the city because it's nice when I stop and have to go really quickly, I can just punch that to a faster speed to give me some assist, but I don't necessarily have to crank up my pedal assist level. I can keep it in a low gear. Something I noticed as I was riding this e-bike is how much front suspension this actually has. I think it has up to 100 millimeters of travel for this front handlebar to move, which is a lot. For the amount of shocks in this thing, I feel like that front tire just pops right up off the ground. So it's really nice when you're going over top of bumps, it's really smooth and I felt like my ride was really enjoyable. This Ride One Up Taurus has a lot of features jam-packed into it as well. It comes with front and rear fenders, which I think are a must when you ride in different terrains or different types of environments. They really help to keep you a lot cleaner. The C-Bike also has a front headlight, which is integrated into the technology, so you can control it just from the plus button, which is really nice. You can turn it on and then hold the plus button to turn it off as well. So I really like those two features right there. And something else that I really like about this e-bike is that it has these nice all-terrain tires. They're not the same as a fat tire because they're not as thick. They're not the four inch fat tires, but they do have a lot of tread on them. And I feel like you have better traction going over top of dirt or different things like that. The one thing that's just average on this e-bike is this seven speed Shimano shifter. I like the trigger shifters better that are underneath the handlebar, but it still works fine. And I'm someone when I ride an e-bike, I actually don't shift that often. I usually keep it in a high gear like six or seven and then I just use my pedal assist to assist me where I need to go. I actually don't rely on the shifter as much. So that's something to point out with an e-bike. You might be like me and might tend to rely more on the e-bike rather than the shifter. This is what the front screen looks like. You have your battery power here. You have what pedal assist level you're in. You have your miles per hour. Then you have how many miles you've traveled so far. And then you can cycle through your pedal assist levels with the plus button and the minus button as well. To turn on the headlight, all you have to do is hold the plus button and that'll turn on your headlight. Hold it to turn it back off. You can tap the power button and it'll show you your trip, your time, your voltage or your, I don't know what that is, your, your, how much uh, energy your battery's giving you, your motor's giving you, and then back to your normal miles per hour, odometer, max, mile. So there you go, that's your screen. Not only does this e-bike go 28 miles an hour, but it has a 750 watt rear hub motor that is awesome for getting you up hills and over top of different types of terrain. I felt like I didn't have any trouble at all driving this e-bike with this motor.
Moving on, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the design and appearance of this e-bike. To me, it looks great. I like this deep green color. I think it accents the bike really nicely, especially paired with this gum tires. I think the design of this e-bike is top notch. I also really like the hand grips on this e-bike. They have a little bit of extension here for your palms. They feel nice and grippy and comfortable. I don't feel like they're gonna slip or twist or anything on me. So I like the hand grips. And also this seat is nice. I really like it. It's really squishy. It's a soft material. So the seat, in my opinion, is a nice touch, especially for this more all-terrain type of e-bike. A nice comfortable seat is a must. As you're taking a look at the handlebars, I like that it curves up towards you. It's a little more ergonomic and a little more comfortable of a ride when it's in this position versus just a straight handlebar like a normal mountain bike. I prefer ones that are curved towards you. The battery on this is black, which is a nice accent to the green color. And what's also nice about this battery is it's located underneath the bike instead of on top of it that just makes it easier to take out there are some e-bikes that i have that are located on top and sometimes you have to worry about this top bar not bumping it and squeezing your hand in there so when it's underneath the bike it's easier to take out and put back in something i forgot to mention earlier is that this e-bike has a cadence sensor versus a torque sensor but in my opinion the cadence sensor that they use with this is actually pretty smooth so you notice with the torque sensor that it's going to kind of adapt to the way you ride if you're pedaling harder the bike will assist you more but a cadence sensor is just programmed to be like certain levels of energy it gives you but with this e-bike the way they designed it i don't know how exactly but it's a really smooth cadence sensor it almost feels like a torque sensor because when you're on like a low pedal assist level it will gradually give you assistance and when you boost this all the way up to pedal assist level five it's going to give you a lot more energy and a lot more output of your e-bike but the cadence sensor but the cadence sensor is a smooth takeoff. It doesn't just jolt you forward with a bunch of energy. The one thing that I mentioned earlier to you actually was that I really like the front suspension. I feel like it's really comfortable going over tops of different bumps, but sometimes I wish that like the seat or the rear had like suspension with it. That way it could cushion your ride as you're going if you're sitting on it. A lot of times if I'm going over a really bumpy area, I'll just stand up on my bike and ride it. The front handlebars feel great and they're absorbing the shocks, but when I'm sitting down, I can still feel them on my butt and still bouncing. So that's just something to point out, but that's like in all e-bikes. I don't know any e-bikes that really have rear suspension versus if you get into like an e-dirt bike type of vehicle. But for every normal e-bike that I've reviewed so far, they don't have suspension in the rear, but maybe we could get it included in the next version. <laughs> like I mentioned before, it has a front headlight right here, but it doesn't come with the included rear tail light. And I really like when e-bikes include that into the software and into the system. That way you can just click a button and it turns on a rear tail light if you're riding at dusk or nighttime, but this one doesn't include it. So you'll have to buy a rear light if that's something you're looking for. Okay, so in conclusion, what are my overall thoughts about this e-bike? Overall, I'm pretty pleased with this e-bike. I think it's pretty well suited for any types of environment. I can ride this on pavement. I can take this out on gravel roads or on dirt trails. I think it's gonna do just fine in a lot of different types of environments, but I don't want you to think that this is like awesome in comparison to like a mountain bike like you're not going to be able to hit jumps and go crazy with it because you'll still definitely feel it in the suspension but overall just where i live in the environment i ride in i feel like this is a well-suited e-bike for my needs another nice thing about this e-bike is that it has a range from 25 to 45 miles that you can go on one charge which is quite a lot especially since this is a class 3 e-bike and you can ride it at faster speeds it still gives you a lot of battery power to go on a pretty decent long trip Usually I'll get tired before the battery dies on an e-bike like this that can go 25 to 45 miles. So overall, I'm pretty pleased with it. I like the way it looks. I like the way it handles. I like that it has hydraulic brakes. So overall, I'm really pleased with it. If you're interested in this e-bike, then I'll put a link in the description below for you to check it out for yourself. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on another one.